Good morning. Good morning and welcome at the Vienna School of International Studies. Um, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be a partner of Dialogue of Continents for this conference here at the Diplomatic Academy. Uh, and very good reasons, I think, why uh, it makes sense to work together on such an issue. Uh, these are fluid times, as we know, and very, very difficult times uh, for the way we, we look at the relations between e economics uh, and politics. Uh, I personally and the Diplomatic Academy comes more from the political side of things, uh, but we also have a strong chair on, 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 on international economics. Uh, and, and what I see is now here that these discussions, which are not new, we know how the relations between economics and politics uh, have uh, been important uh, since we know that things are, are, are in the flux. Uh, but what is new actually is this idea uh, of uh, do we know how urgent things are? Do we know what de-risking really means? Uh, is there a chance for a different form of globalization? Uh, and who is ready actually uh, to, uh, to do this? And who are the players, the actors in this? Um, look at Russia. And I think we will discuss all these little things. Uh, the, the globalization, as we do research on it, I think we have three areas. We have one is the financial, the financial system. Two is the information. And three certainly is trade and, 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 and the manufacturing side of it. Uh, and when we look at how the actors are working on these three areas of globalization, we see how many things are, are moving. I'm here only to say welcome. So you have to discuss these issues. But every day when I look into what China, Russia, India are doing in these fields of globalization, how they are discussing the issue whether there should be a different reserve currency. What currency to, to use in the trade between India and Russia, for instance. I see how things are moving. And when I was Austrian ambassador uh, in Moscow, then Austrian prime minister visited St. Petersburg, the economic forum. And he was sitting on stage with, with uh, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. And they were discussing certainly energy, and they were discussing uh, the, the supply of energy. And, and Putin asked our then prime minister, why do you, do you pay for this gas in dollar and not in euro? Our prime minister didn't have an answer at that time. He didn't have an answer at that time. And I guess that's where we still are to a certain extent. So I understand that you are about to discuss what happens after Bretton Woods, Bretton Woods, Bretton Woods end, uh, and but also discuss what it means for the possibilities uh, for de-risking uh, also in the in the in the supply lines, uh, and uh, and what Europe can play, which ro Europe can play a role in. Uh, today and tomorrow, when I look at the at the list of speakers, I have to admit, I see too many people from the West. I guess even, if, and especially in such a discussion, we need to have more people also from the South. Uh, but this is just a remark maybe uh, for, for the future. Uh, welcome from my side, and I look forward to, to hopefully a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ambassador, and uh, let me first uh, thank you personally and all your staff for welcoming us here for the sixth edition of the uh, Dialogue of Continents. This is something we started, uh, in fact, in Hamburg in uh, 2017, where Germany chairs the G20, and with my colleague uh, Enik Voppel from the Center for European Policy and uh, Massimo De Andres from SRM, we decided that it would be good not to tackle only global macro issues, that's what Reinventing Bretton Woods has been working for many years in terms of thinking about uh, monetary policy, central banking, but to enlarge our thinking and bringing together the issue of geopolitics, international security. 
So when we decided about the next venue of Dialogue of Continents a year ago, we felt that maybe Vienna might be a good place. We started to talk uh, for the last two years about weaponization of the global economy. We started to talk about de-risking, fragmentation. This is in indeed the state of world and wording and concept that unfortunately the global economy is going to face for the next decade. And this is the reason why we entitled this conference De-risking the transition toward the new globalizations. So in order to understand what we mean by that, maybe I wanted to just put into context a set of questions that we ask all our panelists for the next two days. And I want to thank all of you for joining us here. I agree today that the global south is not so represented. My argument was we met a month ago in Marrakesh and we have an representation of the global south. So we try to balance you know, between. So when we look at uh, the issue of de-risking, number one is we try to understand are we moving away from the last 30 years of globalization where we, in fact we have a decade where we have low interest rate, low inflation, unconventional monetary policies. And today, the key word is the higher for longer. So what this higher for longer is all about when thinking about global macroeconomic policy? What are the policy trade-offs for central bank and how best to calibrate the policy tool to meet the global challenge? Price stability versus financial stability, rebuilding fiscal buffers and enhancing debt sustainability versus spending needs and public investment in key areas. Our emerging market are going to deal with shock in the short term by taking into consideration the persistence of some global shock. So that's going to be maybe the first question we will ask our panelists in our first session on global macro. You are moving away from the area of globalizations and for a new higher for longer in terms of interest rate environment, there are going to be major challenge for central banking ahead. When we talk about uh, the multiple crises, the poly crisis we have been facing, war, you know, pandemic, inflation, energy crisis, this uncertainty over geopolitical, geopolitical tension have major ramifications for policymakers, and particularly about designing and redesigning strategy for the future of global value chain. And here we are going to have a session chaired by Henning Voppel to try to understand what this de-risking is all about, how you do a stress testing and with your relationship and is Europe can they risk and, and how to avoid further global economic fragmentations. You say that national security and geopolitics are supplanting economics in shaping national and international interactions. So this is maybe the end of the international economic order that we was underpinning was the Bretton Woods institutions. So here we will need to look how countries will adapt to this persistent fragmentation pressure, how emerging market can take advantage of friendly near reshoring, and if, if fragmentation implies a more shock-prone world with less diversification through integrations. And one of the other topics that we put together on the agenda is clearly the AI revolution. What is AI? how to ma maximize the benefits of intelligence artificial, and how can we minimize this harm, and what may be the impact on AI for the future of job and the distribution of prosperity, and like everything else, in terms of global governance, how we should govern intelligence artificial. Last but not least, we have a session on connectivity. This is very important here, in terms of connectivity, and when we talk about deglobalization, are we moving more toward more regionalization? This is a topic we will be looking at. And of course, the issue of the international monetary system, not only about the change in terms of reserve currencies, but our central bank digital currencies might have an impact on the way we think about the international monetary system and the monetary system at large. Central bank digital currencies, the rise of stable coins, and crypto assets, which is not a currency. Last but not least, we need, we'll have a great panel about the international financial system for all, where we are going to bring, in fact, a set of questions about global governance, international interdependence, and we can build a strong, fairer, and more international monetary system. We are meeting at the time of the COP28, so issue of climate will be also on our agenda today. So thank you very much for all of you to, to join. Um, we will have also two important lectures. One, which I think will fit very well with our agenda, and I'm very pleased that Professor Henri Farrell 
who just released a very great book called Underground Empire and How America Weaponized the Global Economy, will give us a lecture tonight for the dinner. And tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon, after our last session, Harold James also, we look back at the period of 30 years of globalization and the many crises that this period have, you know, from the emerging market crisis of the 1990s and the global financial crisis of 2008. So one historian, one political economist to give us, I think, the, the, the flair and the feeling of our today's event. Thank you again, Ambassador, for your hospitality and all your colleagues who put together this meeting with us. And if I can call now our first panel on global macroeconomics to come and to take the floor. And Professor Jacob Franco has kindly agreed to join with us and will be sharing this uh, session on higher for longer. Thank you very much. Thank you.